Hello and welcome to another video on a geometric interpretation of systems of two ODEs. So what I've done here, um, perhaps you've already watched the previous video on the saddle steady state. So what I've done here is I've gone into my eigenvector eigenvalue folder and I've changed the eigenvalues so that they are now both negative. So if you're familiar with your ODE theory, you should know that that means we should have a stable node. And so let's take a look at how this one works. So I've already got, so let's see, let's get rid of these for now. And what you see here is just the vector field. Oh, and eigenvectors. Okay, so you just have the vector field here. It's a little hard to tell exactly what's going on. But once we superimpose the eigenvalues on top of that, you can see um, what the two primary directions of interest are. And so I'm going to move these around. So I can just grab these. Desmos has some nice uh, slider features that are controllable. So I can move these around, and you can see how the phase plane changes as I move those eigenvectors. Just to get a better idea of what solutions look like, let's include some initial conditions. And so the two black dots correspond to initial conditions going backward in time up this way and forward in time this way and we can slide those around and change them and you can see that for the particular eigenvectors and eigenvalues that I've chosen you have this characteristic u-shape. Now if I were to change the eigenvalues so that they are the same we would lose the u-shape we'd be at a, at, a degenerate, at, at a degenerate case where we have a proper node when they're both minus one. And there all the eigenvectors point directly in towards the origin. But generically, if you have two negative eigenvalues, you're gonna have some U type structure. And there's two directions along which the solutions will come straight in, and those are the eigenvector directions. Okay, so, and we have also the same decomposition I showed for the saddle structure. And here, let's just play that quickly so you can see how the two components change in time and interact. And you'll notice that whichever one shrinks more quickly, so let's exaggerate this by changing some of the eigenvalues, one of the eigenvalues. So here they're not so far away, but if I make this one much closer to zero, that is a slow changing direction. And so we come rapidly, so the purple direction shrinks rapidly, and the, the green direction shrinks slowly. And so that's what determines where the bottom of the U is in this picture. So if I were to switch it and make the purple direction faster shrinking, having a larger negative exponent, or more negative, I should say, and then I slow down the other direction, so there's the proper node and I go past it, and now I have slower in the purple direction, and you can see I now get that U shape in the opposite direction. Now I have to move and take other initial conditions to really see that U shape, but it's still in there. There we go. And now you can see that the faster direction always comes down to the slower direction and then you come in along the slow direction, which is what gives that flat bottom to the, um, to the solutions along that slow purple direction. All right, so uh, that is how the eigenvalues influence the shape of these solutions for a stable node. Let's, uh, let's actually look at what happens when I turn that. So I'm gonna temporarily go through a saddle structure. Uh, let's just watch what happened there. So we have the stable node. I'm going through an eigenvalue of zero. And here they all just come down and don't move along the purple direction because that's a whole line of steady states along the purple. But then when I go further along and I make that eigenvalue positive, you can see, maybe I'll get rid of these eigenvectors. Maybe it's easier to see what's going on. So now you can see I have a saddle structure and I can exaggerate it, make it more clear by bringing those in around the steady state. And now let's bring the other eigenvalue up positive and we'll have an unstable node. There we go. And you can see you have that same characteristic U shape and the slow direction is still the bottom of the U. So I'm going to exaggerate the eigenvalue in the purple direction, eigenvector 1. And you can see that characteristic U shape, even though we're now going in the opposite direction. We're growing out. 
So that is an unstable node. Okay, so um, the way I've coded this up, I can't actually use this gizmo to illustrate um, complex eigenvectors and eigenvalues. Uh, and so what I'll do is I'll show a completely different gizmo that is coded up to do that. So what we have here is the green vector here is the, oh, I don't remember if it's the real or the complex part. It is the real part of the eigenvector, which is complex now. And the blue one is the imaginary part of the eigenvector. And I can move those around and you can see what happens to the solution. Now I've colored the very beginning. So the initial condition is down here in purple and the beginning, let's put that in projector mode. There we go. And maybe I'll even get rid of the eigenvectors to make it a little more clear. Oh, no, not the eigenvectors, sorry, the vector field. There we go. Okay, so um, you can see it, the initial condition is here in purple and it, it's initially purple and then it turns to red just so that you can easily see the direction of movement. And so you can see how the influence that the real and imaginary part of the eigenvectors have on the nature of the solutions. You can get elliptical solutions when the eigenvector and eigenvalue have a different magnitude. And if they are, you know, perfectly orthogonal and same magnitude, or even not orthogonal, oh no, they've got to be orthogonal to get perfect circles, for example, or a circling spiral. And then if the eigenvectors have a zero real part, let's see right there. So this A1 is the real part of the eigenvector, the real part of the eigenvalue, I'm sorry, and A2 is the imaginary. So this will change, uh, oh, no, that's not right. Where is it? Oh, that's the real eigenvector, imaginary. Ah, here they are. Down, no, those are still eigenvectors. Ah, eigenvalues, here we go. So this is the real part of the um, eigenvalue. And so that's why it's spiraling inward. If I make that more negative, it spirals in more quickly. And if I bring it out to zero, then I will have perfect circle solutions because they are, are, there's no exponential decay. And if I make it positive, then you have an outward spiraling sol solution in the phase plane. Uh, similarly, I can change the eigen, the imaginary part of the eigenvalue, and that will change the frequency of the oscillation. So if I increase the frequency, I should get more wraps. And you can see that's what's happening here. And if I decrease the frequency, I should get fewer wraps because it takes longer, at lower frequency, it takes longer to go around in a circle. Okay, so that is the rest of our possible scenarios where we have uh, real eigenvalues, either both positive, both negative. Uh, I covered the saddle case in the previous video where I introduced this uh, Desmos sort of gizmo business. And then we also have here the complex cases. All right. Thanks for listening.